when solving the sum and difference of two cubes, there's a formula that we're going to apply. All right. Now, why is this the sum and difference? Why is this the difference of two cubes? Well, is x cubed a cube number? Meaning that you can take a variable, multiply it by itself three times, you get x cubed. Yes. And what about 8? Is 8 a cube number? It's actually up on my cube numbers. I lost 27. But yeah, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, right? So this is a difference of two cube numbers. So the formula that you guys want to write down is when you have the difference of two cubes, that formula for the factored form is going to be a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. Okay. For the sum, a cubed plus b cubed is a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. They're just general formulas. We're not going to use them a whole bunch, but they should be something that you guys have is kind of like in your back pocket, something that you're like, OK, I can go through these. Yes? Huh? What's the bottom one? That's, it's this, remember how we have the difference of two squares? Yeah. But there's no such thing as the sum of two squares because you can't factor that out. For cubes, you can take the difference and the sum. So I'm just giving you the formula, even though we're not going to apply that to here, I'm just providing it for you because I'm just going to be able to do one example and that's it. So if I wanted to factor this down, we got to figure out what a and b is, right? Right now, this is a cubed minus b cubed. Would you guys agree with me? So therefore, we could say, basically, to find a and b, we just need to take the cube root of the first and the second term. So we could say a is equal to x, b is equal to 2. Okay, And again, it's just a cubed minus b cubed, so don't really worry about the, the negative in there. So now we're just going to plug this in. x minus 2. Uh, x minus 2 times, let's see, we're going to have x squared plus 2 times x plus 2 squared. Sorry. And we want to set that equal to 0, because that was originally set equal to 0. Now, again, talking about linear factorization. Is this good? Do we know what the 0 is? 0 there is? 2, right? Fast, easy. Crap. We got something else we got to factor. Because this is not linear. So we go ahead and simplify it. And we say, all right, what two numbers multiply to give you 4, add to give me 2? Dang it. It's not factorable, is it? So therefore, we have to go back to our quadratic formula. I know. It's, it's a bore of a question, but it's a really good one. Hint, hint, wink, wink. So if we're going to go and plug this into our quadratic formula, if we want to write this down, we could say x is going to equal to uh, opposite of 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times c. All over, uh, all over 2 times a, which is 1. So x equals negative 2, plus or minus. 2 squared is 4, uh, minus 16. So we have negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 12 divided by 2. Now, remember how we talked about? Thank you very much. Remember how we talked about rational numbers? Well, guess what? Now we're also going to have, well, we already have irrational, but now we have irrational with the square root of negative 12. So, um, So I'm just going to rewrite that with i squared of 12 over 2. And I could simplify the radical, but I'm going to go through that as um, so.
So now, if I wanted to set these equal, do you guys can see that those are my two zeros. But if I wanted to write this as linear factorization, yeah, well, if I want to write this now as linear factorization, I basically have, let's write this down there, sorry, negative 2 plus or minus i square root of 12 over 2. So those are my two zeros. So I, found my, I have my 0 here is 2, and then I have my two zeros down there. But if I want to write this down as linear factorization, I would have x plus 2 uh, minus i square root of 12 over 2, comma, x plus 2 plus i square root of 12 over 2 equals 0. So therefore, the zeros are 2 and negative 2 plus or minus i square root of 12 over 2. Yep? Yes, it is negative 1. I just didn't simplify it, did I? Thank you. So therefore, that's how you write it in linear factorization, and that's how you'd write it in um, as the zeros.